So this is just a bit of an insight into what I do uh, when I'm working on the arrangements. So it's going to show you a little bit of how I put the piece together. So I'm just working on an M&M suite. Um, it's someone that I've kind of been thinking about doing for a while, um, but he released a new album um, in January this year. And I thought it might be a good opportunity to do something with his music um, orchestrally. So I've just been working on um, all the separate tunes really, and it's about kind of putting them together. Uh, and so what I've done here, what I often do is I do a list of the tunes that I want to do and just put what keys they're in. Um, because that's sometimes when I'm a bit stuck, I'll just match tunes by the keys. So for example, Lose Yourself is in E minor and so is Mockingbird. So they're two tunes that could go side by side. Obviously, sometimes if things don't lead on, then I'll kind of transpose it from the original key and make it something that it's, you know, into a different key or whatever. Um, but I always had in mind that it would start with Lose Yourself because that's that kind of epic uh, tune that everyone knows from 8 Mile. But right now I'm just working on We Made You, um, one of my favourite tunes. And so what I'll tend to do is I'll get the tune up in Audacity, which is like a free bit of software. Um, but you've got kind of control over position where you are and stuff. And so I'll play, I'll just basically play it through and transcribe it. So Guess who? Guess who? Do you miss me? So what I've done here is I've already kind of um, noted out this. I mean, it's it, the instruments are on the track anyway. You've got this trombone. Guess who? Guess who? And that glockenspiel. And so what I've done is I've put it onto the strings. So we've got this. And so I, yeah, it's a very kind of boring process where I just go through the tune. Um, and so I've transcribed the melody here in the woodwind. And so I've listened to, yeah, the original. But on the original, we've got this kind of tambourine with the drum beat. The and so one thing I always try and do, um, as I've said in other, other of these behind the scenes videos, is I try and get away from using any drums. So the last thing I really want is a tambourine going or a boom, boom, because that's just too easy. And there's there's a lot of covers of tunes where it's, you know, you put a drum kit in and half the work's kind of done, you know, especially with hip hop tunes. So what I've done here is I've, I've uh, chosen strings to be doing this kind of cheeky pizzicato thing playing the backing. Usually my workstation comprises of Sibelius, which is what I notate in. Um, I sometimes write down bits on paper. Uh, it just kind of depends. Sometimes my eyes are tired of the thing, so I'll, you know the screen, so I'll just write down. And sometimes I'll be in Logic, and so I have a template with all the instruments and you know each instrument staccato and legato. So I've got strings and legato. And just having this template open means that I've got I've got a pretty decent library of of instruments. I mean, Sibelius sounds aren't great, and sometimes that's quite uninspiring. So I might kind of come into Logic and just play, you know, some chord ideas. So yeah, I always have that open. I have Audacity open, and the great thing with Audacity is, uh, let's say that there's a section that's too fast. Uh, you know, so let's say there's that and it's quite a hard melody, which this one isn't so much, but say it is, we can change the tempo. So um, it's around, oops, it's around 120 BPM, I think. So we can go from 120 and move it down to 90. And it's probably probably the one of the best, you know, free softwares where you can change the tempo and it's not, it doesn't make it sound crap. 
So now I've got a slower version which makes it easier for transcribing. And also playing tunes slower or faster than they are can sometimes give me ideas, you know, it completely changes the sound of the song. Um, you know, with this it's quite a, a minor a minor melody, it's a sad melody, but because it's got that it's, it's kind of like upbeat, but taking away those elements is, is one thing that I like to do. Um, like with the Prodigy thing and like with the Avicii thing, they're all, you know, it's dance music, so it's, it's quite upbeat. Whereas to take it out of its context and make it slow is what, um, you know, kind of creates this different sound. And then I'll always have Spotify open with, with the tunes that I've selected. So here I've got my Eminem suite list. And it's got all the tunes. And what I'll do sometimes is kind of move these in different orders. So I'll be like, oh yeah, that's going to go there or this is going to go there. And sometimes I'll just listen to the playlist in the car or at home just as like a... It's just to familiarise myself with the music so that when I come to do the arrangements, I know it better than if I was to just kind of start blind with it. Um, and so yeah, and then I often have some scores by me. This is one of my favourites, just for like, if I'm sitting having a kind of dead moment or writer's block, so to speak, I'll get a little bit of this. In fact, there was part of this, so this is Vorjak's New World Symphony. Um, there's a bit in the fourth movement that I actually uh, took as a, um, as a kind of idea for this second section of, of We Made You, so this triplety thing, although it's a little bit Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, so this bit here that I've got. Um, in that piece, I mean, it's not the same, but I think you'll be able to hear how, um, how it kind of inspired or, or how the orchestration here kind of um, inspired me to, to write what I've written. So this is the Dvorak piece. In fact, I think I've spoken about that piece before. I literally always go to this because it's it's one of those pieces that I've played percussion in and I've kind of studied as a piece. And so sometimes if I'm just kind of not feeling it or if I'm a bit tired or whatever, I'll, you know, steal little bits or whatever. I think the reason I chose Eminem, um, a bit like The Prodigy and Skrillex, uh, Major Lazer, is that he's been a kind of influential figure in, in that style of music, in hip hop. Um, there are, you know, there are other artists that I could choose, but Eminem for me, I remember being a, you know, 16 year old kid with my Walkman listening to Lose Yourself and feeling like I was really cool. And, you know, back then I had no idea that I would be a musician on, well, I had no idea that I would make a career out of music. And so really he inspired my journey as a musician, uh, even though the first step was kind of, you know, just me liking his music and, and it making me feel something. Um, and so and that coupled with the fact that a lot of his music, I mean, there's some samples, but um, a lot of it's very melodic. You know, a lot of his, his rapping is melodic as well. And sometimes he sings and sometimes his raps are kind of melodic. Um, and I think it's that, that interest, it's, it's that kind of aspect that interests me the most is that, you know, I could do a suite without any rapping and it's still recognisable as his music. That's not to take away from his actual lyrics and his rap, but it's these iconic kind of riffs and melodies that, you know, people automatically, well, they just instantly recognise. Um, and I think it's, it's that pioneering side of it as well that I think is important for bringing it into the orchestra because classical music is kept alive in things like film music, but you go to a classical concert, more often than not, it's a piece like that Vorjak Symphony or a Beethoven piece. Uh, and although these aren't original pieces, they're still a way that can make orchestral music accessible to, you know, an Eminem fan. There might not be an Eminem, you know, there might be an Eminem fan who's never been to a, an orchestral concert before, but he could come to this, you know, to a gig and, and listen to this and listen to an orchestra for the first time or whatever. And I think that's what fascinates me and interests me about doing these orchestral classical mashups of 
other artists in other genres. Hi guys, thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more content like it, then it would be great if you could consider supporting us via our Patreon page. There are different levels of membership. Um, we're going to be uploading more bonus content, behind the scenes, footage, things like that to our, our Patreon on a regular basis from now on. And we really would appreciate any kind of support that any of you could give us. And so thank you very much and we'll see you soon.